So the BlackBerry Key One is still a usable phone. Now, having a discussion about security patches and stuff like that is a completely different story, but uh, I decided, I, I made a video the other day talking about how I miss BlackBerry, and, well, I have all of them, basically. So the ones that are still working, of course, are the BlackBerry mobile devices, the Key One, Key Two, Key Two LE, and the Motion. I thought, why not put my SIM card in my good old BlackBerry Key One, the Black Edition? And this is definitely a lot better than the original. I had the original, I got it like day one when the BlackBerry Key One came out. I had the, it had three gigs of RAM, which was horrible. And they rectified that by making a four gig of RAM model, which it needed because the hub basically took up like two gigs. Like the hub and the operating system basically sucked up all the memory. So then when you were trying to run actual apps, it didn't have the RAM that it needed. So it would get sluggish and choppy, give you a low memory indicators and all that stuff. So they did some good things with the BlackBerry Key One Black Edition. I had the 64 gig of storage and four gig of RAM model. And four gigs of RAM, Android 8.1. I mean, it was totally fine when this phone came out. This is my favorite out of all of the BlackBerry mobile devices. And you're probably thinking you like it better than the Key 2. Yeah, I do. I, I like the more rounded appearance on here. I think it makes it easier to hold on to. I never really got comfortable like holding on to and typing on the Key 2. I don't like the squared edges. It made it kind of boxy. Just wasn't my cup of tea. I do like the Snapdragon 660 and the six gigs of RAM. Like I totally wish I could get that in the Key 1. And also we have the Pixel series camera in here. Like the cameras were never otherworldly impressive on the BlackBerry mobile devices, but at least they got that original Pixel camera in here. It was pretty good whenever it first came out. All the like the selfie cameras kind of pants and all that good stuff. But overall, the BlackBerry Key One, like if I could get a new phone, if I could get a new BlackBerry today and somebody was like, how would you like to design it? I would design it very similar to this, except I'd put like a Snapdragon 778 in here. I don't think that we necessarily need like an eight generation two, but uh, I think a 778 is very fair because you get plenty of power, plenty of sophistication, 5G, all that stuff. But at the same point in time, good power performance, good power and battery ratio, all that great stuff. So I mean, we could put like an eight plus generation one in here. I would be totally fine with that. Even like a Snapdragon 888, uh, definitely not the eight generation one because that one's terrible on heat and battery life. But I think from a cost perspective, when you're looking at cost, when you're looking at sophistication, when you're looking at capabilities, and what you do with the BlackBerry device, of course, with the 778, if people are concerned, which I think there's probably like eight people that play video games on a BlackBerry phone, but I think the 778G is a good, good chipset. So that would be ideal for me. I would say eight gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 778. I would say probably a double camera system on the back, uh, probably just a wide angle and a primary camera. I don't really think that we need a telephoto. I don't think we need a three camera array cluttering up the back of the phone. I think two cameras is fine. Uh, one thing that you really would need to look at when evaluating and making a new BlackBerry is who's going to buy it. Like there's not millions and millions of people that would buy it. So you got to make sure the cost is not super, super high. So you get a good balance. Let's say a Snapdragon 778, eight gigabytes of RAM. I would like to see we're going to go with a minimum 128 gigabytes of storage. I would like to see 256. A lot of people like to do productivity work, get work done, download lots of attachments for work and things like that. So I'd like to see 256, but it really needs to have external storage. So we could we could get away with 128 and throwing in like one terabyte support for a SD card to put in there as well. Wireless charging, absolute necessity. Uh, of course, we would want high-speed wired charging. It doesn't need to be 100 watts, but I would think probably 45 watts would be very fair, especially if we're looking, like, let's say, looking at the future of having this made. Yeah, I think at least 40 watts, 35 watts is safe to say on here. A good selfie camera. Yes, even business professionals, even people who like to use physical keyboards like to have selfies. Uh, you want to take selfies. You want to make your TikTok videos and stuff like that, right? Everybody wants to do that. So... Yes, I, I think that you would need to have a good selfie camera. Definitely put emphasis there. I don't think you need to have 8K video. I don't think you need to have probably not even 4K 60 on the front facing selfie camera. I mean, we're not get carried away here, but I, I think some modern complementary camera stuff would be good. Stereo speakers, absolutely a must. And it would need to have at least a 5,000 milliamp battery. And I think if you look at, okay, let's say, let's pretend we've got the Snapdragon 778 and 5,000 milliamp battery. You're going to get really good performance. You're going to get all day plus battery life. And if you've got some decent charging, that's good too. 
So I would say we could even get away with, let's say, Gorilla Glass 5. I thought 5 was pretty good before we got into all the Victus and all that stuff. I don't find them to be otherworldly amazing. Uh, let's not even talk about IP68 <laughs> because you're not going to get that with a physical keyboard, especially not if you're trying to make it slim and all that other stuff. So that's just one of the things with the keyboards. It, yes, they accomplished it with the Unihertz Titan, but it's got a big rubbery, like membrane, heavy, bulky phone, keyboard, all that stuff. No, thank you. Blackberries are meant to be communication tools. They're supposed to be keyboard first. If you want a good keyboard, yes, it's not going to be waterproof. And I think a lot of people never really caught on to that, but there are reasons why. Uh, it needs to have a really good screen. And there's two different schools of thoughts here. Uh, now, I would like to have an OLED, but I know there's a lot of people who really are concerned about the, I think it was called PWM or something. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's a problem for people who are sensitive to a certain type of the light that's emitted from the OLEDs that can cause a lot of like headaches and eye problems. I don't think you absolutely have to have an OLED on a BlackBerry. I would like to just because I love the OLED phone, but also if you just went with a really good high quality LCD, which there are plenty of those out there, one, it's going to get better power consumption, so that's good in the long run. And two, you don't have to worry about that for people who have that sensitivity. But I don't know. I, I personally would like an OLED just because I think they have better color saturation, the screens look better, all that jazz. So it could go either way there. I wouldn't do, be too heartbroken. But I think that this is a good way to go. I think that with the design on the BlackBerry Key 1, I, I like this rounded. I think the ergonomics are good on it. I think one-handed use is really, really good. We're talking about we'd have a modern operating system. So even with like a 4.5-inch screen, we could probably get that to about 4.7, 4.8 because you would have swipe gestures and ditch these capacitive buttons down here. So all in all, looking at those things and just having an aluminum build on here, having like a nice rubberized back for grip and things like that, USB-C, all the modern things that you would expect from a phone, I think that it could be a very viable phone. I think if they could squeak it in around the five or $600 price point, I think it would probably sell pretty well. Now, this is this is a complete like pipe dream conversation of what Adam J. Matlock, Tech Odyssey, would like to see in a new BlackBerry. If we could ever get our hands on one one day, who knows? Maybe there's somebody with billions of dollars sitting at home on their couch saying, you know what, I'd love to invest and get some sort of a licensing agreement and make a BlackBerry phone because I just miss physical keyboards so much, right? So... Yeah, I, I, those are kind of the things I'd like to see. Also, there's a headphone jack here. A lot of business professionals like to use headsets. And if you've got a wired handset or headset, you don't have to worry about batteries and recharging and things like that. So I think as a business tool, communications device, and kind of a legacy thing to have in there, yeah, I think it would be probably good to have a headphone jack too because a lot of people still like to use those. And it's a big complaint even still with the newer ones. So yeah, keep the headphone jack, keep the SD card. But really... I think they could get away with this pretty well. Like, I, I think that if you're talking about what would be a good modern design, I don't think we need to go the slider route, even though I know some people like a slider, but one, it costs more money. So if you're looking at costs and development and all that other stuff, I think to keep costs down. And also, I like any slider that we've had before, especially if you take a look at, like, the Priv, I hated that keyboard. Like it was not good. It was dropped down below the actual screen itself and it had the ridge for the bottom of the keyboard. It just wasn't that great. Like I hated typing on it, even as a huge BlackBerry enthusiast. As much as I like the phone design and the screen, uh, I would really like to see two different Blackberries. Like I would like to see one that has a like an all touch screen, like the Motion was a very good phone. Ba basically just the same kind of hardware, all touch screen, but then also the keyboard option. I don't really see the allure when you're talking about a all touchscreen BlackBerry other than you know before it was the security. And like the BlackBerry Z30, the Z10, the BlackBerry Leap, all excellent phones. So it's not that BlackBerry could never make a touchscreen phone, but when you're BlackBerry, people expect a keyboard. So I think taking a look at those things, considering all that stuff, what we would maybe look at at a price point and the idea of still having a viable physical keyboard set up, yeah, I think that this is probably the best kind of design. Uh, you, you've got a nice keyboard here. The BlackBerry Key 1 had an excellent keyboard, and I like the material that it's made out of. I like the design. I like the way the keys are set up. As much as I do like the hardware that's in the Key 2, I just... One, the keys felt kind of lopsided. Like, they, they, didn't, they didn't feel as sturdy, especially with the uh, spacebar problems that the Key 2 had. I did not like typing on as much as I did 
on the key one. So this would be ideal for me. If they did like a key one, like 2023 model, and just basically change all the stuff that I mentioned and talked about here, that would be an amazing phone, Android 13. Like I could use that phone for the next six years. And that's the thing with Blackberries. You don't need a new one every year. It's not like you got to keep up with the Benjamins. It's not like, hey, we got a new iPhone. We got to make it every year. We got to make 10 different Samsung phones every three quarter, like every quarter. You don't need all that stuff. And if you got a solid hardware platform, a good chipset, and just a promise and a guarantee of really good security, and you can do, of course, the end-to-end -end encryption stuff if they could do that and pull all that off. Yeah, there's a. I think there's a great place for a really secure phone going into 2023 here at the end of 2022. Yeah, everybody is trying their own little thing, and there's been some players that have fallen to the wayside. You look at OnePlus has got... Pulled under, pull under the uh, whole Oppo branding name. You look at LG is gone. I mean, Sony basically doesn't even sell phones in the U.S. hardly anymore. They've got a different strategy. I know BlackBerry is not going to do this. I don't think anybody else is going to going to get a licensing agreement to do it either. But I, I, after talking about it the other day, and I put my SIM card back in here. Thankfully, it works with T-Mobile, so that's great. I had tried it with my AT&T SIM card before, and it did work, but it just not good, like the signal quality and all that good stuff. I, I was using this while I was out and about today, and I, I'll probably carry it around this weekend. It, it's so nice having my physical keyboard, but yeah, it's definitely feeling dated. The Snapdragon 625 is just not quite a big powerhouse, I got to tell you. So, But carrying around as a secondary device that I can use, and I, I love tweeting on here. I love tweeting on here. I love replying to my comments and stuff like that on YouTube. It's really, really special and enjoyable to be able to have still a high quality keyboard experience. And these phones are pretty cheap. I, I've had this one for a while, but I mean, you can go on eBay and you can find them relatively inexpensive and they're still pretty half decent. So going back to my original thing at the beginning, yeah, security is a problem. Like this thing hasn't had a security patch update, I think since like April of 2019, maybe. Like it's been a long time since there's been one. I'm going from memory here, but I, I really like this phone. I, I, I would love to see at some point in time if they ever find a way to do it, like and all the angels were rejoicing and the planets and the stars aligned and cats and dogs were living in harmony. That would be my, my dream phone, my dream wish for what we could maybe possibly see in reality. But again, probably never, ever, ever going to happen. It's a complete crazy out there idea just talking about this. I appreciate any of you entertaining it who are watching this because, look, if you watch this far, one, you know how much I love these phones. And I know that some of you folks out there still love them. So, I don't know. After I made my video talking about how much I miss BlackBerry phones the other day, I thought, you know what? Let's talk about the key one. And also, yes, the whole point of this was, yes, it's still usable. Uh, again, the security issue is a thing. But Android 8.1, Android, all that great stuff. You can still get your apps. You can still use them. And I can still play Boom Beach on here. But the biggest thing, of course, is being able to use it for a communications tool and all my social media and all that stuff. It's perfect for that stuff and showing its age and the browser definitely isn't as fast as it used to be, but gosh darn it, I love this phone. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments or interjections, you know, if you had your, I like if someone said to you, what would be your dream Blackberry? What would you do? What, what, what would you make it out of? What, what do you think would be a good, way to go about it. Sound off in the comments. We'll talk about it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.